So now we enter Soterio and the journeys of the clip off. In Soterio, this is where you enter in delirium, confusion, the energies of profound and very dark wisdom where Kali rules time. This is where you get Clopho, Lachesis, and Antipas, the three dark mothers that spin, weave, control, and cut off man's destiny, determining how it is, <clears throat> how long it exists. This is where you get the sensation of being lost, wandering down endless hallways. This is like being in a pitch black warehouse or in a pinch pitch black labyrinth, very labyrinthine. Now you feel like you're in too deep because now you passed Lilith. You've done your meditations. You've you've had your dark night of the soul. The energies of Saturn are governing here. So Saturn of return being a primary catalyst to this alchemical change that is to take place in the journey. <clears throat> and at this time, Soteria was happening to me when I was maybe roughly about 28, 29 years old. All of the characteristics and signs that would pertain to a Saturn of return taking place in Exodus Reditus for sure. And these are the energies that were very, very prevalent during that experience so this is what i saw here <clears throat> being not knowing about these creatures or entities that govern it this sphere being governed by governed by lucifuge who is the opposite of lucifer lucifuge is the uh lucifugio to flee from the light in this fleeing from the light he is the one who guides you through the dark tunnels these dark tunnels lead to the opening of the third eye. So in this cave, you can see the initial uh, the initial journey, the initial path that you're going to embark on as this dragon. Now that you are, you are the dragon. So you're doing your first uh, first few steps out of the cave where you rest. That's where Satario is. On a spiritual level, it's where you rest, is where your force is, where the true you is, the dynamic you, the unstoppable you, the juggernaut, the immovable object, the 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 powerful you, the almighty you. So you're sneaking through these tunnels, this tunnel of mind, these tunnels of thought to think, is this right? Is this wrong? Am I going too far? Do I turn back now? Is it too late to turn back now? A lot of people who even engage in real clephotic uh magic <clears throat> they are often told to consult with a real licensing clinical physician for mental health they're they're in some circles even mandated to receive this so that they don't get lost in the sauce and get pulled apart psychologically and go crazy because if you're not stable in mind places like this will pull you apart and there'll be nothing left of you but the worst parts of you and all of these chaotic forces that exist on this side the citra aura the other side they'll pull you apart fast turn you from being a uh you know a uh bible salesman to a serial serial killer so and a lot of people have went all away into darkness and to harm and others so that's why with all things that i learned as a super positionalist my main rule is to harm none and either in word word thought or deed that's that's my one rule to harm none for the sake of self-defense when you're defending yourself wound just for the sake of increasing distance to avoid if you have no choice you defend yourself only under those conditions but in Satario, so you become <clears throat> put in on this track where now you're supposed to meet the one who's in the center of the underworld. Now you're going all the way down into the core. If this is Dante's Inferno, this is where he goes into treachery, ninth circle to meet Lucifer. Wherever, whoever you see as being the head of hell, this is who you meet. For some is Satan, for some is Odin, for some is Arishkagal, for some is Kali, for some is 
Shakti, for some it's Shiva, for some it's Rhea, for some it's Freya, for some it's <clears throat> this one and that one, for some it's Baal, for some it's Astaroth, for some it's Beelzebub, for some it's Azazel, Azazel, for some, right, for some it's Samael, etc., etc. You're going to meet the height of your antithesis, the height of antithetical nature, the champion of all that was hidden is what you're going to meet forces with, not join yet, but meet forces with. And this is the beginnings of the opening of the third eye. So the third eye is not all the way open, but this is that first waking up in the morning and the light is bright and, you know, you're not opening your eyelids right away, brightly as to be startled, but very slowly and methodically and almost with a yawn, with a stretch to go with it. This is that stage. But in that, you simultaneously feel a black fire that rises up in you. So my stretching and my opening of the third eye, which was open for my entire life, there were certain things in my character buildup, my character makeup, the way the Most High designed me, my third eye was never allowed to close. I was born with it open. So I didn't experience the sensation of the third eye opening or a sensation of life being not what I thought it was. I didn't get that total incorporeal reversal of the covers being yanked off what I thought the world was. I was already aware of what the sub world was and what the in-between was before taking on the Saturn of return stage in my life. But what I did see <clears throat> was my effect on this world. That was the major change in my world was my effect and my position on it. Because even in my third eye being open all my life and just being aware of things and having spiritual powers and insight and wisdom, I still felt at effect to the things of life. I still didn't feel like I was the one that was making things happen. I felt like it was my role and all that I could do was properly respond to what's happening in life, but never to be procreative in life, but to be recreative to recreate to be reactive to respond but re never pro that was what was changed in the soterial experience for me and i had to go through my own confusion delirium absurdities to see that i had to comb through my own dark corners of my psyche to find that i was the dragon when all my life, I was taught to be the sheep or the lamb or the sacrificial bull, an animal for sacrifice, but not an animal that is an overarching terror that can wipe out a world and control a world. Not a beast, but a feast, so an animal provided for a feast, not an animal regarded as a beast. This time in Satario, I'm first beginning to understand my identity as a beast, not a sacrifice for a feast, but in the identity of a beast. <clears throat> and this came with a sense of overwhelming type of uh, lashing out because again, this was when the Saturn of return was happening. So there was that, the dark lashing out, the uh, the crisis of identity being broken down and reconstructed by both mind and experience. So all of this was in that process. And I didn't know at the time that I was running uh, head on into whatever the head guardians of the underworld were. I didn't know that I was running head to head with Lucifer or Satan or any of those guys. I just thought that, wow, I'm just going through a tough time and everybody's tripping and Maybe I'm the one tripping. That's all I thought at the time was going on. It was none of this mystical stuff and Kabbalistic stuff and clephotic stuff and mental alchemical things. There was none of that going on. I was uh, just very recently jumping into the study of the 
105 universal laws for third dimensional living, I wasn't all the way advanced yet. I, I still had Bibles memorized up, multiple versions, many versions, which also provides me still a very, very supernatural edge in terms of just being able to put together information because as an esoteric, not exo, but an esoteric soul, I always saw things like the Bible differently anyway in these unfolding, living, breathable, dynamic, interchanging meanings that makes the word so living. But what I found was it wasn't so much that the words on the page was alive as much as if you're made a certain way and if the most high influences you a certain way, every word that you'll come across will be a living word because you're the one that's really providing life to the words. Another person reads a sentence for them is just a sentence. You read it. It's an entire program and a production, a form of progress, a product, something that makes you proficient. You see it a different way. <clears throat> Soterial helped me understand all of this as the first beginnings of light flickered. Super T Sigma, Sigma program, and I thank you. I appreciate you for your time and attention in these regards. We will finish the remaining spheres of the clip off. So at any time, if you want to reference this, just look into the topmost videos in the Fireside Chats playlist, the most recent. I should have them at the top in order of most recently added, being first in the list, starting from the top. So I'm trying not to throw any other topical videos in there just so there's no uh, confusion in the message side and so that I don't just put a separate playlist in just for the clephotic experience. I want to keep it in this main Fireside Chats playlist. Surrounding that, I'll put uh, different music out just for the sake of providing entertainment and insights in between these bigger selections of messages. Again, thank you for your time. Super T Sigma, vibrate high. Peace.